Hi, everyone. Um, so I know we're running a little bit late. We're going to have 15 minutes. You'll get to lunch, I promise. Um, so we're the Tober Society. We were a Youth Mappers chapter that was founded last year at the University of Chicago. And we're going to talk about how we got college students on our campus engaged with mapping, our best practices, and what we learned from the experience, uh, and where we're going in the future. So I'm Renee, uh, and I founded the organization. And this is Cyrus. We're going to go through the introductions at the end. Okay, so um, just getting into like kind of what Tolbert Society is. Um, so yeah, we're Youth Mappers chapter. I don't know, um, how many of you have heard of Youth Mappers? Just show fans. Okay, yeah, I'm kind of Youth Mappers. Yeah, so uh, it's it's pretty much yeah, an like, international student um, mapping organization that um, is, is really good on holding like mapathons that, uh, that we utilize a lot for um, our group. And it's kind of just a really good way to getting like kind of younger individuals into uh, mapping, kind of getting some technical skills down to then use later. And so we were actually awarded a, yeah, the most active new Youth Mappers chapter, this little flex right there. Um, for, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, we, we used, uh, to get this award, we kind of, it was uh, through just um, holding mapathons and really reaching out to the, the student body and uh, getting, we, we had a pretty uh, good turnout for like how new we were. Uh, so it was, it, we were really excited to see where it can go from here. But yeah, this is pretty much an overview of what, what we do. Yeah. Um, so to give some background on what our campus is like, um, there are a lot of research professionals who are doing really important spatial data science work and geography work on campus. Usually through the library, we have a really strong math library on campus and the Center for Spatial Data Science, of course, um, headed by Luke Anselin, where they're developing Geoda. They're doing a lot of great research. Um, but a lot of that is currently um, becoming integrated with the U Chicago college students and like getting them involved in classes. So before the main way that those two were connected was through the Committee on Geographical Studies, um, which runs the major, which was a very qualitative geography, a really strong qualitative geography program for a while. And now that it's become the Committee on Geographical Sciences, it has more influence from the Center for Spatial Data Science. But still a lot of the connection between um, all the great research that's being done on campus and the students is through the courses, um, which are usually major only. But there's actually a really great um, like potential for what can be done across other disciplines. And so that's where Youth Mappers comes in um, to sort of engage students outside the classroom in learning about geography and learning about mapping, as well as spatial data science and learning those like more statistical and technical skills. Um, and while this is on the opposite side of the map from all the other organizations, um, the Tobler Society wouldn't have been what it was without the connections of those organizations on campus through the library and through the Center for Spatial Data Science, as I'll get into. Um, so the thing that we really wanted to get out of the Tobler Society is filling the gap between, again, like research and classes. So we really wanted to tap into the student interest that we had um, not only in the geography program, but in e economics, in social sciences, in all those other disciplines, um, and get people more familiar with how mapping works and what they can do with it in their research and in their daily lives. Um, so another thing we wanted to focus on is how to give people skills in an hour-long presentation that they can take with them, so how to sort of build these sustainable techniques for learning that I think exist outside the classroom, especially after school, um, but that while you're in college can be kind of unfamiliar to you. Okay, so we realize, yeah, it's like um, to kind of engage with the student body, there's a kind of a, a four-step approach we kind of have. Um, and so, um, like, uh, I think Thomas kind of touched on with, um, like, OSM is kind of a gateway drug. I, I really like that um, <laughs> comparison to it because it's really just like, it gets students in like, it's their first, ex first exposure to GIS and like really it's like most basic level it, like with mapathons. Um, and so like uh, when uh, our mapathons, it's kind of like, oh, it, you don't need like really extensive coding knowledge. You don't need really to, to be that like uh, involved in GIS. And most of like the vast majority of the people who are in, engaged in mapathons are not GIS majors. They are like people from all these different fields who have a kind of maybe even a casual interest in GIS. And then they go into these mapathons. And so this is kind of, like my story is I, I came into the college uh, as a statistics major and this, yeah, I've only just, just finished up my first year and I was very relatively new to academia 
And I went to a mapathon and kind of was then int intrigued by GIS and like kind of how the crossover between like the data science of statistics could that be used in like an applied method through um, mapping. And so I now like plan on yeah, majoring in uh, geographical sciences now. And so it's kind of like changed my career path. And like, I wouldn't imagine like a year ago presenting at a conference like this at all. So I'm, I mean, thank you again for like, having me. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's something that, yeah, I um, just like these first, this first exposure is a really big thing. It's like so many fields can be influenced or like uh, can, there, there's so many, so much crossover between other fields, like econ, political science, and a lot of other like social sciences that um, in that regard. And so that's like what we try to tap into the student body is to get a like a little bit of exposure with mapathons. And then the second step is like a workshop. So it's like the skills that are kind of needed to actually do GIS work. And so that's when you little like again to more like actual GI. Yeah, like you're getting a little more professional um, like knowledge about it. And then we really are about like the open nature of GIS. And so with a third step, workshops led by other students. So we really believe that there is, everyone has like a little bit of themselves, like, in sh like everything, everyone has a little bit that's like, can contribute to GIS and kind of like everyone is, is uh, can help other people to kind of understand it better. And so, yeah, then the fourth is, yeah, our Geographic Science Symposium, which was our first one was held in May. And you can kind of like uh, the students and faculty and graduate students kind of present on their personal projects that they have kind of learned through kind of these other three steps. Um, so it's it's kind of like a, it's, it's a process, but it's it's all worth it in the end, I believe so. so. Yeah. yeah. So just to sort of bookend these, the photo in the upper right is from a Mapathon that we did at the very beginning of the year, and the photo on the left is of someone presenting at the symposium at the very end of the year, which we're hoping to make a yearly occurrence. Um, so how did this all happen? I would say like a big part of it was having a research center on campus that was doing a lot of good research and was very interested in engaging with students. This is one of our, this is our very first workshop which we did with Angela Lee. She's giving a presentation on uh, using R with OSM data, um, which is also a workshop that we're giving on Sunday. Um, come out, it's at nine. Um, 9.30. Um, <laughs> uh, so, Another thing was that we were really willing to entrust students with responsibility early on. We were willing to say, hey, like you've started learning these skills, now you're gonna share them out with a group and like increase that capacity building among the organization so we don't have to rely just on like professionals who are able to give these presentations, but actually like showcase the talents of individuals. Um, and I think there was also a big part of it was having students who were genuinely interested in building their skills outside of the classroom and like being able to give that their time while in a four-year college program. Um, and I think a big part that we wanted to focus on is, again, like learning sustainable techniques. So I think I recently graduated and I'm learning that there are so many ways to focus on building new skills outside the classroom, whereas I feel like it's easy to get stuck in a mode of like, oh, I'm gonna learn what my professor teaches me, I'm gonna learn the software um, based on the assignments. Whereas I feel like a lot of us, like when you're a professional, you don't do that. Um, you like go out and find things and you learn how to teach yourself and you learn what resources are online. Um, and then you figure out how to like collaborate with other people. And I feel like the big thing that the Tober Society was able to do is sort of introduce people to that method of learning outside of the classroom um, and sort of making people feel um, very like comfortable being able to reach out to a professor and saying, hey, I've been working on this for a while. Are there research positions available that I could work on at the center? Like, or going into a GitHub repo in order to like understand how to use our Shiny and like being able to look up things themselves instead of just focusing on what they're learning through classes um, and how to basically like enter that like social space of research and learning. And I think that was a big part of it. Um, so do you wanna talk about yeah. the future? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, as I'm a current student of the Silver Society, I'm kind of yeah, touching on like how we like pl planning for the future. Um, we really want to uh, kind of instill the sense of that uh, that 
the GIS community is the strongest when we work together. And it's kind of like, it's, as this conference kind of exemplifies, it's like while we've kind of been working um, just exclusively with youth mappers um, or uh, with mapathons, we really believe that as an organization, if we work with a lot more and kind of reach out to the community outside of academia as well, it can really like prove to be useful in the sense that we, we just get like a, a broad and um, yeah, sense of uh, the GIS community at large. And so that's really what we want to kind of expand on um, both the, the our student participation with like crossing over into different departments um, and like not just like as like maps on show like it's not just like GIS students who are going to be involved in GIS it's like you can do a lot of other things that are like yeah other majors in other fields and so yeah we we also want to yeah just like uh, work with other youth mappers chapters as well so it's like kind of this is conference we open to like uh, meet and talk to all you guys about just kind of either uh, starting your own chapters or kind of connecting with new ones and uh, yeah just uh, building. Uh, for our symposium that we hold every single, uh, we're going to be holding every single year. And so, yeah, it's, it's something that we really hope that maybe we can see some of your faces there at, at the university in May. And so we really look forward to kind of just like what the future holds for GIS in at UChicago and the world at large. So um, thank you so much. Yeah. And, uh, it's So I'm Renee Hisaris. Uh We have our information up there if you want to look at our Facebook page. Um, we also have an email if you want to just reach out that way. Um, working on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, are there any questions? Lunchtime? Okay. <laughs> what types of mapping tasks or projects do the students find most interesting? What are they most drawn to? Um, I would say a big part of like the mapathons that we did was that we tried to sort of not only get into like what the project is and how OSM um, like supports the communities that you're mapping, but also like go into um, I think one of the early projects that we did was on Chistosomiasis in Senegal. So sort of like understanding like the research project behind that hot OSM task and like why are we doing it and what. Um, how it was part of this larger community. I think that's something that people really connected to um, just because like they weren't just like, again, like drawing rectangles on a map and like they were actually like seeing the effort um, like play out and the effect that it's having. Are yeah? you in the students, uh, you mentioned outreach to, uh, you mentioned outreach to the wider geographic community. Are you So we're trying to expand in that way. Um, we kind of wanted to focus on what was going on on campus for our first year, but we're talking with um, the lab school and other like local middle schools to work on a project with having college students teach in middle schools and teach about uh, OSM. Um, we're hoping to have some other collaborations with other people in the OSM community for that as well. Um, so it's definitely something that we're working towards. And I think like having the student-led workshops this year is a good way to s introduce people to that. Hey, uh, what's the, um, I guess, what's the most difficult problem you guys ever faced when holding these mapathons? I would say with mapathons, it's definitely like the buy-in. Um, so it's easy to tell people like, hey, we're gonna have this two hour event. Um, it's kind of community service, it's kind of something else, but it's hard to really like condense that into a like two minute pitch. Um, but I would say like once we got people in the room, they were like, oh, I see what this is. Um, and it's really exciting. And they like were able to bring people back um, in the future. And like we got the word out that way. So I would say that was a big, big issue, like trying to pitch the mapathon to a bunch of people who are more interested in like running regressions than doing like actual like satellite imagery and mapping. How many events did you hold um, this past year, like as far as mapathons? Um, we hold a mapathon every quarter, um, so three of them uh, on the quarter system. So we hold three mapathons, I think, also three workshops and the symposium. Oh. I would say like. 
My favorite was probably that, honestly, like that first workshop that we did um, with R and OSM. I um, like founded the organization. I was like trying to get the word out, but the day came and I was like, what if no one shows up? Um, and so it was so gratifying to see like everyone who came out and everyone who was really interested. Um, it was also a really great workshop gave um, Angela Lee uh, who I think came to this last year and is a really great resource on campus, um, gave this presentation on R and OSM. And so it was a great introduction because a lot of people at UChicago use R in some way. Like it's a required thing in a lot of courses, um, but they haven't heard of OSM and they want to learn more about APIs. So it was a, it was a great workshop, I think. Do you have any favorites? Cool. Well, thank you all for your time. It was good.